I'm surprised that they actually got uh, uh, Val Kilmer to reprise his role for that. Oh, you gotta go that far. Nice. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> hey, at least you're not going nipple Batman on it, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> nipple Batman? Yeah. yeah. George Clooney's nipple Batman, right? I can't, I can't. Yeah. I, just, I forgot about that because Val. Has nipples. Yeah, See, Val hold on. We need, we need to. Butt. That's why I started dying because I just saw the suit. <laughs> we need to like stop and just get started. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> what up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of War cast. It's Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I'm Rob. I'm Danny. And I'm Josh. And that's how we introduce the show, gentlemen. What's first on the agenda? Shots. Shot. Cheers. Holy shit. We're missing somebody. Guys, what do you want to talk? Oh, well, apparently Mark got in trouble and uh, wasn't allowed to come out and play with us tonight. So he uh, he's grounded for a week. Uh, but hopefully his parents let him go and so he could be back with us next week and helping us do this a little bit more professional. But in the meantime, we're taking over. Um, first thing we want to talk about, August 9th. Little Karma, we're debuting a new single. You could pre-save it, listen to it when it comes out. You'll get the announcements. Plus, it helps with our algorithm that says, hey, people actually listen to this band, and we're not just some spam. So please go to the link in the bio, click the pre-save button. It helps us out. Tell your friends, download it, listen to it, like it, subscribe, follow. Uh... The next one is coming September. Yep. Yeah, we were uh, same. Uh, we were talking about September 13th. Friday the 13th. I like it. And we got to yeah. celebrate Friday the 13th. So we're going to be dropping you a new track in September as well. So stick around. Look for the announcements for that and advertisements coming up. Um, we got a little couple of media things we're working on to make some uh, artwork and all that good stuff for you guys, too. Um, should we just go into the first topic? Do it, yeah. Let's open this up, just like the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, talk about grand openings. you got people from Snoop Dogg running the torch to Gojira playing on the river. Gentlemen, what were your thoughts? On the whole thing. Awesome. That was awesome. Like, I haven't been watching any of the Olympics, to be honest with you, but mm -hmm. just the clips that I saw of that opening ceremony, being such a huge Gojira fan, and then them being able to do that in their home country, that's got to be awesome for them, one. And then two, for metal music in general, for that to be included in such a big that worldly works. thing. Like that, that's unforgettable and nobody could ever take that away from them. So that's by hands down, like that's something that can never be done again or replaced. Guinness Book of World, uh, world Records for them for sure. Oh yeah. Danny. Yeah. Um, I didn't catch the whole entire thing. I came in uh, before Gojira played and um, the whole, right when I saw the, the headless woman and she's singing and I instantly thought, here it is, you know what I'm saying? And then it just, the camera zoomed out and they came in and um, I loved it. It was great. Um, all of the streamers shooting out like blood, all of the fire, it was uh, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to put on that kind of a show in a historic landmark and, and being at their hometown, that's got to be, holy hell. Well, and another thing too is all down the whole the whole waterway there, man. Like I saw dancers in different areas, and it seemed like it was some of it was definitely uh, pre-taped, but there were parts of it that there was performances going on in like clearly different areas. So, like to time all that out and get it all right, it was pretty cool to see the event from that air that kind of perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. But then I think that just I I wonder the growth that gojira has had on like social media of people just going to their site and you know getting involved there because i think that's that's a performance that's that's I think that's going to go down in history i mean yeah first metal band to play the olympics i think that's cool oh yeah uh well i mean this 
brings into another conversation of what other metal bands do you think could have done it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not defaulting to Metallica because that's what you would expect to hear. Um, yeah. Miss Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> With a light show, that would fuck everybody up. Love it. Um, people would just, people would lose it. Like, what is this? <laughs> I think being realistic, realistic wise, probably Avenged Sevenfold or somebody like that, just because they could still draw enough of a crowd and they're not that old yet compared to like Metallica. And I think they could still have heavy of enough of a song without draw like going away from the metal stuff. Danny? A band that could get to play that um that type of an event. I think uh you know you think of big bands, you know, you think of like you said, Metallica. Um you could go with corn and slipknot, but that's what you'd expect people to say. Yeah. <laughs> Right? So I'm trying to think of something different. Well, and that's why I was going with like something like Meshuggah because I feel like I feel like that's one that people that haven't really like experienced much metal would probably just go, "What in the fuck is this?" You know, they just it would blow their minds. You know, what hmm. about uh, being Europe? Uh, that band Avatar. Mm -hmm. Ah. They kind of have like a circus show style performance. Like yeah, I think show. they could. I think they could have, especially with that out that that portion of their uh, their kind of uh, their whole the whole package, you know, that they are. I think that would have worked great, you know. Mm -hmm. Or system. I think a lot of their just their changes, their sound varying from song to song would be like event from event, and you could easily pair that up, like with their different styles being so. Could you get I mean, all just, of them to agree to do it would be the question. Yeah, well, that part. So that's the hard part. <laughs> uh, music, yeah. What about, uh, like, Bring Me the Horizon? I think they would be able to pull. See, now that's a good one, too, for, like, more of the younger kids and the up-and-coming metal and all that. So hats off to them if they could do it. You know? I, think if, but then, uh, I think if Chester was alive, Linkin Park could probably pull something like that off, you know? You think they I mean, still could? Oh, I think they, I think they still could, yeah. But I think, I think with Chester, I think it, you know, he just brought that whole kind of heavier vibe. And I think for for doing something heavy like that, I think that they could do something really cool with it. That'd be pretty dope. Uh, you guys watching any of the Olympics though? You following any of the events? I saw some swimming earlier today. Yeah, that's about that's about it. Oh, my wife was watching some uh, some of the horse stuff. I think I caught the some what? volleyball. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was watching some of the stuff with uh, Simone Biles, and she was doing the gymnastics, and they were going between the bar and the, and the unparalleled bars and the or uneven bars. Yeah, 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 where they're doing the flips and shit, and you see Snoop Dogg in the she crowd. Did, she did some kind of crazy flip, some kind of landing and everything, and then – I saw Snoop in the crowd and they were all partying. Mm -hmm. Like she did, uh, I don't know what her score was. I didn't catch all of it, but um, I think uh, I think that's one I might tune into. You know? Oh Watch yeah, it was it was just amazing. I'm sitting there at the bar just watching this gymnastics, and I never really got into the Olympics when I was younger. You know, like I've never yeah. been like, yeah, the Olympics, but it was just like fuck. I watch this shit and I hurt. Like, oh, fuck. I don't know. If I, I this girl just kicked herself in the back of the head with her foot. Uh, I've, like seen, I've no seen a few videos of some people yeah. eating shit so far. I'm like, Ew, that's rough. Oh, hell no. Hell no. No. Shut up. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> My Alexa just went off. Ain't nothing. <laughs> I'm going to plug that shit. Sorry about that. Um, but no, it's it's crazy because it's they're making it like this big party and that's what it is. But then you're also getting cyber attacks where everything's getting shut down and and they had blackouts and power outages and that man securities is getting beefed up all the way around for everyone, huh? <laughs> yeah. <And your> cardboard <laughs> oh, holy crap! I think. Uh... Gojira should play every uh, metal uh, giving ceremony they have. You know, they should just be there with the stage for them, 
every time somebody wins a medal, they play it. Well, I mean, if that's the band for the Olympics. So for each year, if they do a different country, you present it with a medal. Well, it's band. either it's either that what Celine Dion and, or Lady Gaga or I think there was another a couple other artists too. Mark, is that you? Did you call in? What's going on? <laughs> That's why I was saying, if you don't want to go with Gojira as the band, there's your other options. So I no, was I'm just like the Lady Gaga. Oh, that's yeah, I'm just like, holy hell. No, we're talking metal bands. Like, if we had a metal band from each country who brought in the Olympics and then did the soundtrack and scoring for that year of the Olympics or whatever, that'd be pretty dope. But that's setting the bar high by starting off with Gojira, though. It's kind of like, I just, fuck. I just Ooh. like the whole, the whole kind of backlash, like, just the whole, uh, the whole satanic thing. I've heard all this kind of backlash. Like, I think the, uh, some people from the Olympic Committee, like, apologize. They're like, we didn't mean to disrespect anybody by all this stuff. And kind but of what? said, this is, this is what it was meaning and all this stuff. And, it's just, it's stupid, you know? Uh, people, people are people like, grow. oh, I'm offended, uh, you know? No, oh, always. Always someone's got to be offended, though. Yeah, I, that I, saw that. Right. I, I saw that, and I didn't really, uh, speaking specifically on the Gojira part, I didn't see any satanic stuff. I saw I saw art on display, you know? I just hmm. saw them playing in a bunch of flames. I didn't see any <laughs> satanic stuff, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I just assumed it was hot over there, like it's hot here, you know, hot there. It's just hot. Yeah. Tis the season, right? Tis the season. <laughs> <laughs> what I didn't know, uh, though, Danny, were any of his drums mic'd? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> say, I'm, I'm not gonna claim that that they weren't playing or they were playing. I'm just gonna say that for that broadcast. I think they were on time. The good chance that everything was pre well, yeah. So not claiming they did or didn't. I'm just saying for that event, I think it would be, but they don't like that shit. They don't like giving somebody a, a mic that they could say something stupid or this or that. They're, they're really tight about that stuff. You know, no, but totally never know. Like I said, I, I didn't really pay attention into. to that. I was so just into it. I didn't even look at anything like that. I was just like, <laughs> fuck, I don't care. Hell yeah. And I was like, fuck. Is this a music video? <laughs> like, right, have, have you have you seen them live? Oh, Gojira? Yeah. I've seen them a couple times. Okay. And, but Josh brings up a good point. It's just like, uh... Yeah, well, I mean, you get you get the opportunity to open up for the Olympics, which is the whole world watching. You can't have a Janet Jackson uh, wardrobe malfunction moment. You can't have Metallica technical difficulties. It's like you got to be your A game. Let's bring the A game of metal to bring this in. Uh, I could see him getting caught for trying to be like. Oh no, he's really playing it. Oh well, yeah, he might be, but that's not what pretty, we're here. I would be pretty impressed if they were able to get that to where they played it live. Like I would like not to say not to say at all. You nothing like they couldn't or could or this or that. It's just to be able to get them beyond the point of you being able to do that. That must. I don't know. They got. I feel I like you got. Yeah, if that much money is being sunk into a production. Yeah, you're gonna have to make sure 100. percent It's 100. percent No, I yeah. agree with you on that. I guess I'm just the stickler for. Okay, we're gonna have to pantomime this shit. I get it 100. percent But if I'm gonna go through all the trouble to set up all these drums, get all these symbols on there, and I'm gonna act like I'm playing, then goddamn it, I'm gonna put some mics on there, whether there's volume coming out. So you think I'm really doing this shit? Just because of that <laughs> flea halftime show well, it, meltdown, like no cord into the bass. I don't ever want to go through that where I will personally put the mics on myself. We don't even have to have the cord go into anything, but just let it visually for me put a mic there. Yeah. Just then, then again, though, I don't know, man. I, you know, I think if any band could pull it off live like that as well as they did, I think they can. You know, so 
Yeah. But I think they did. They absolutely did. <laughs> it was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> it. Whether or not it was it was it was mic'd up or it was it was it, whatever it was, it was fucking awesome. No judgment on any of it, you know. No, well, I'm not no, judging. they did a great that's, job. That's either either way, it was got, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, as a metal fan, seeing a metal act open up the Olympics is just that was fuck awesome. yeah. We need more of that. Keep it up, people. That's what we need in creative. Who's playing the closing ceremony? Probably uh, uh, Creed. No, Creed. no. Fuck no. No, let's not ruin that. Let's not crazy. ruin that. <laughs> um, Don't ruin the moment. Don't ruin it. So, uh, the highly anticipated movie of the summer came out. <laughs> I was looking forward to this segment. I love this. Uh, unfortunately, Mark couldn't be here tonight. He was, uh, caught on a plane flight home and he couldn't make it in time because of the, uh, you're not allowed to use your technology and shit on the air. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the segment with Adam. Uh, the movie Deadpool and Wolverine came out this weekend. Did you guys see it? <laughs> no. Okay. So we are going to review this movie, not having fucking seen this movie. Um, I, I don't think I need to tell you this. This is probably all satire. So we're just <laughs> going to have some fun with this. Uh, enjoy it. Um, but I think Mark is already going to give us his stamp of approval of this Yeah, review. so next next week we'll have him come in and tell us how, how accurate we were. Um, Danny, what was your favorite part of the movie? My favorite part was the, uh, what, the cameo from Batman? Batman, yeah, dude. Showing Did you see amazing, that? Dude. That was crazy. I yeah. I wasn't expecting. Sorry, guys. Spoiler alerts. We're gonna have a couple, minimal. We'll keep it minimal. But fucking yeah, Batman, right? Yeah. And yeah, with the uh, with the bat nipples too, and all. There was they, they, <laughs> they used got, the they same got George too. Clooney to do it. Yeah, they, they got Clooney to Clooney reprise Clooney. his role. I'm so I. I mean, no shit. That you, was you figure, back. yeah, because they've, uh, they've never worked together, but that's that's how they got together is because uh, the, they do the alcohols. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were drinking one day. That's how they got Clooney in. So that's a, that was like with the bat nipples. I thought that was a great game, you know. <laughs> I can't get past the bat nipples. That's right. <laughs> oh. hey, well, I mean, it was Batman, hard to get past them. Yeah, it's got to be nipple Batman. Like, I need my Batman with nipples. <laughs> AMFM, you know what I'm saying? Tune in Tokyo. Uh, Josh, what was your favorite scene? Probably when you had Mickey Mouse show up to take the dog from Deadpool. Oh, the animated part of the movie. That was a good little bit, too. Like, I'm surprised that they got the, uh, the actual Disney animators to animate that whole part. Yeah. My favorite part was when um, fucking Robert Downey Jr. showed up as Black Panther. That right there was like, fuck. When that, when that happened, when that part hit, bro, it was, it was fire from there. I was just blown away, dude. That was pretty crazy. Uh, but, uh, like, Nicolas Cage and his cameo, that was fucking nuts. Right? Yeah, we're in the middle of doing, hold on. Yes, we're in the middle of doing the podcast. Yeah. Just hit her. Right just hit her. You just, <laughs> you, you just, you just, you just, she's like, she's like, I mean, what's going on? You guys doing the podcast? I'm like, no. I said, yeah. <laughs> she asked, we're good. I'm like, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're great. No, we're not. <laughs> <The podcast. laughs> Josh, Josh straight center to you, like. Well, she's there. Are you good? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, no. So the, Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, all the cameos. You, you see all those cameos in there. Like, how'd they get so many people to come and contribute to this movie? Is it just because they want to be part of the MCU now? Is that yeah, what it I is? Think so. I think. I think at this point now, for some people, it's just you know get hey, in. Hey, let me let think... me get my head in there. That's yeah. why we saw so many people in it, you know? It's, it's, they're just trying to get in the MCU now, so yeah. they'll they'll get a contract. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, but speaking of Robert Downey Jr., uh, this weekend was also San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. 
and the uh, big news drop of of uh, our DJ Downey Danny. Jr. You wanna? You, yeah, thank you. You wanna? So Robert Downey Jr. is playing Doctor Doom in the next Avengers movie, which I know that I've heard that has kind of blown some people's mind because I think they either didn't catch or forgot about the whole multiverse situation. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I guess it's going to be uh, Robert Downey Jr. playing Doctor Doom, which I think is amazing. I think that's going to be cool. But here's here's where but I think not, it's hold still on, not not as cool as Nipple Batman. Yeah, well, Nipple Batman, <laughs> Nipple Batman, and Deadpool is just <laughs> highly recommended. Like to get Clooney to reprise that role was amazing, and especially the go from Marvel to DC, DC Marvel across those lines. I, yeah, and them breaking um, barriers here. Yeah, the Green Lantern references, that was funny. Uh, uh, but San Diego Comic-Con. Now, this raises questions because it was Dr. Doom. He came out to the crowd, took off his mask, and revealed that it was Robert Downey Jr. Now, he's going to be Dr. Doom in the Avengers Doomsday series. So now that raises questions if he's going to be Tony Stark as Dr. Doom or if he's going to be Victor Von Doom. But they also announced that they're making a Fantastic Four movie again. And where they got Pedro Pascal as Mr. Fantastic, and you got the guy who played uh, Eddie in Stranger Things as Human Torch. Okay. Um, They also got John Malkovich signed on. So it's kind of like it's got some names to it, but here it is. You got an Avengers universe and you're doing the whole shitty thing that happened to us with our superhero movies back in the day. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where it was like, uh, Hey, we're going to do this Spider-Man, but we're going to cast this guy over here for this role. And then we got the Avengers and they're doing this thing. So it's like, Hey, here's Quicksilver in the Avengers, but here's Quicksilver in the X-Men movies. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? Oh, it's the same <laughs> character, but he dies in the Avenger movies, and he's alive over here in this X-Men series. It's like, it's it's because of the name and him selling so many of his royalties of Marvel to Disney. You thought he collected them all, but <laughs> here we are again with this, oh, you're rebooting the Fantastic Four. But didn't we kind of see part of that in the whole... Uh, Doctor Strange 2, you know what I'm talking about, when it shows John Kaczynski as uh, Mr. Fantastic, you know what I'm saying? So, it is Reed Richards, so it kind of is like, wait, is there, you guys are just doing this multiverse where Sony and Marvel can do movies now at the same time? Yeah, cool, that's how we worked it out. Makes more money, so. Exactly. You would think... But what happens when one bombs and starts tanking because the other one's... Wait, just, there's just, one hey, that's bombed? Are you serious? Isn't that what the whole review of Deadpool vs. Wolverine is taking all the dead shit that they keep trying to launch and it failed and fucked up and it wasn't that great, so they have to go kill it all. But we're going to keep making those movies too. Like, why? Why are we doing that? So... Money. Well, yeah, whoever, you just have to put out a movie so you can still keep your rights, and we put out a movie so we can keep our rights, and you just get hit with twice as much Fantastic Four and Marvel bullshit. You kind of become numb after a minute. So that's why Deadpool versus Wolverine is a little refreshing because it is a rated R Disney Yeah, uh, I Marvel feel movie. like that right there with the Robert... Downey Jr. thing kind of really, I think, puts some put some fuel in the tank for them. You know, I feel like I feel like now That's I'm like nerds. Hey, they like got rock they though. got a few movies here that I want to go check out. You know, <laughs> I now call my cock Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> He's back in the fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's up, Junior? <laughs> RDJ, you ready to do this? <laughs> I don't know who I am. <laughs> but he did, he's got the voice of Kurt Lazarus the whole time. <laughs> From Tropic Thunder. <laughs> I forgot that was his name. I saw, I saw a, a thing of that today where it showed a picture of him taking off the mask and then it's that and he's like, a dude playing another dude, you know. 
I know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude disguised as another dude. Another dude. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna keep this going real quick. Uh for our next segment. Uh <laughs> writer's block. So everyone gets hit with writer's block. So if you get hit with a moment where you just feel either burnt out, uh where you're just like, Okay, I need an idea and you try to force it and nothing's there and or you just get distracted, your ADD's running wild and how do you how do you find motivation or what do you do in those moments to try to get the ball rolling again? Danny? Uh, for me, it's, I've, I've had it happen many times. So I think every single time it's ever happened to me, I just go through and kind of reinvent the way I do it, you know? And, and I think over time I've, I've kind of invented a few different kind of paths I go. You know, okay. like, hey, I got a drum beat, you know, like, let's throw some guitar to it or let's let's write a guitar part or I got a chord progression or I got an idea or something, you know. So I've got several different ways I kind of go about doing it. And then, yeah, I don't know. What about you? What do you got? How do you kind of get past that? Uh, me, I, I work on multiple projects at once. Um, if you were to look at my notepad on my phone, it's like there's five different songs or, you know, eight different songs that are going on at once. And it's like, oh, I, if I'm using this line here, I don't want to use it in this song and give it that feel or that vibe. But I, I need more words and all that. So I'll, I'll have like five songs going at the same time. So if I'm stumped on one, yeah, you move like forward, a, but... I'll, I'll give that song a break. Just put it on the back burner and let's let's hit another one. Let's hit. Um, but for me, I also switch mediums too. So I'll sit there and I'll draw and just throw on another artist I like and let that inspire me and be like, Oh, you know, I haven't, I haven't heard this song or, you know, you let the, was it the earworms take effect where you hear a song? You're like, Oh man, I haven't heard that one in a minute. Let's, let's go down this route and see where this takes me. You know what? That, that'll inspire me, you know? Different things help me like, oh, that's a great line. Like, I, I think someone should reuse that line or reword it for today, you know? And and that that helps because when you hear other artists and other things that influence and inspire you, uh, keep that going. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Josh? Being a drummer, it's not that I lack rhythms or patterns it's more of because i'm working with more than one band i have a terrible issue of crossing patterns timing oh. with timing so when we're working <laughs> on writing stuff it's more of i go off of what what's the feel behind the song what what type of song are we going for and then i try and listen to similar styles or artists that <laughs> a song I can get an idea from where how you're saying you could work on multiple songs at one time and do cross reference with lines. If I try mm. to do that with drum patterns, I'll get confused. Oh, no. oh <laughs> so yeah. No, but it's more of a, 100%. I, I can work with the, I don't know if I could do a whole entire song from beginning to end drum pattern wise, unless it was just, we're going for a basic structure. Where with mm -hmm. you guys, you could start off a vocal and, okay, this is as far as I'm going to go for the day. I kind of stay along those lines with patterns when we write. So then once we kind of feel like we've got something locked in and I'm comfortable, then I'll start thinking about, okay, what could I add to that? Versus right off the bat, I have the drum beat and I want to use this and that's how we're going to do it. Because yeah. I can think of something in my head, but then trying to play it, does not usually work out the same way that I think. So it's trying yeah. to find the median in between. Is that doable for me? And do we actually think that that sounds good? Is that going to come across for the pattern that we wanted? Because nowadays you can easily use the beat machines and like all of our pre-pro yeah. stuff is pretty much Danny doing all the drums. And then mm. he'll come and ask me, what do you think about this pattern? Do you think this fits? So I still have a say, so to speak, but the main structure of the songs for drum wise is all Danny. 
and then it turns into, can we realistically play this live? Do you think you could do something along like that? How can we take an electronic produced drum and make it believable to be a real drum? So that's more of the challenge for me that I try and think of with patterns. Like, I don't really get writer's block. It's more of confidence of, do I think I could fucking play this? Because I could think of patterns all day long that will work great for us. But at the end of the day, if I can't play it, then it's kind of like, I don't want to even attempt to try and cross that bridge. I want to push myself, but at the same time, I know my limits. And I'd rather not put something out there that I can't do live versus, oh, well, it's going to sound awesome and nobody's going to see me play it because eventually you're going to have to play that song. Yeah. So it's, do you, do you give the Neil Pert or do you give the Lars Ulrich, you know? And I, yeah. I don't want it to be like that, but yes, being a drummer, it really does come across like that. Like there definitely are some songs that you, that you just got to do like, a basic, simple beat. You got to nail your pills, yeah. And other stuff, Sorry, go like, on. Oh, oh, just don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Like to this day, I still feel bad for that dude because they they're never gonna get off his tail. He's still oh. talking, Lars. He's still Fuck talking, him. taking his money. Fuck but he's still like those he, those fills, bro. Like, oh, you're off, and I, I I know you're playing to a click. You just must not be he, hearing what you're playing. Hear, no, I think I think the whole thing with Lars is one for him to come off with as much confidence as he did making as much money as Metallica has made over the years and coming out and being like, oh, Napster. And that's when it was just like, Poof, fuck this yeah. guy. Like, he's not about the music. He's about the money. And it's like, oh. That's why the drumming never got uh, better. Oh. Whew. Okay. 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 We don't have to fire shots. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that's why they were shooting at him. I didn't say, hey, grab your gun. Um, <laughs> um, but also, another thing uh, we could bring up real quick is this week, uh, Dixon flannel that was used in a piece at the Punk Rock Museum was pulled this week from the museum. Uh, it was brought to attention that uh, the owner of Dixon a couple years ago uh, posted a fuck Antifa t-shirt that he was selling. And so him being part of the establishment, it's totally not punk rock. And so they threw a big old hissy fit and said that Dixon Flannel has no business being a part of associating with the punk rock museum. And they've done collabs with Rancid and Pennywise and even bands like Slipknot, Hate Breed, War, everyone is pretty much collabing with Dixon Flannel. But it's uh, for them to go like fuck the punk rockers, and then here you got some punk rockers collabing with them. Um, so they've reached out to uh, Fat Mike of No Effects, who helped put the punk rock museum together, and he said that they are now no longer going to be working with. Sticks and flannel, and they're sorry about that air in their judgment. And they hope to do a uh, good filtration uh, for allowing content into the museum. Um, but it, that's a big movement for today, especially with a lot of the shit that's going on in politics. Not to just be like, yeah, you know, uh, it's it's kind of like, hey, your guy was on the Epstein flight. Yeah, I'm still gonna vote. Like. What the fuck? If if you don't, if you hear this shit and it's like, hey, these guys said fuck you, we're gonna still take your money. Do you still gonna pay them? And for me, I'm kind of, well, I've already sunk a lot of money into you guys, and then to hear this shit, it's unfortunate. I'll rock your material until it wears out, and then I'm done. You know, but you're you're just like, can you be part of this mindset? Um, where you have artists, uh, Slipknot, Metallica, uh, like I said, Suicidal Tendencies, everyone has started collabing with Dixon Flannel. At, at this point, if you have a message behind your music, do you collab with certain artists or are there brands that you're just like, nah, I'm fucking, it's just about the music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you really have to vet things and really, really look into things when you, when you're choosing to collab with somebody, you know, because yeah, yeah something like that pops up and then all of a sudden it's like, whether you're 
for or against, say, Antifa, regardless, mm-hmm. now you are. So, you know, or you're affiliated with somebody who is. And you just got to be careful, you know, to make sure things are lining up with your vision, you know? Uh, I just, I think uh, it, it, it falls in between the lines of, of how Static X handled their issue with Trip when he was in the band. And and then how his case went and how you separate it and you can move forward from it. Or you have a case like The Lost Prophet and you don't talk about them, you don't mention them, you don't play their stuff ever again. And those guys, good luck to everyone else except for that singer. Uh, but none of them really have a career, you know, when you get hit with stuff like this. So Mm -hmm. how do you, how do you bounce back? And I say the quickest thing you do is once you find out, um, Hey, this guy I've been working with is a really piece of shit. I just found this out. I'm distancing myself and my family as much as I can and whatever future products that I associate myself with will not be a part of this guy. Or whatever it be, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm real close to that with the guy liking boy bands, uh, but you know, <laughs> being in a metal band, man, so much. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. I'm gonna get it. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, there, there comes a point where you just have to say, like, hey, this, this is the line, and I can understand, like, you have a band like Rancid or no effects that do these collabs and they're like, Oh, cool. You're just going to take the artwork from what we had and you're going to make a pattern out of the colors we use. Cool. Hey, cool. We'll push this and you push that. And then you find out the guys is like, fuck you. Give me your money. And he's like, ah, oh, uh, get out of here. Like there, there, there are shitty people out there. Um, there's a, there's a lot more of the shittier ones than the good ones, but, we're just here to fight the good fight. Absolutely. Uh, and on that note, gentlemen, any last words? Pre-save. Gojira, pre-save. pre-save. Little Karma. 13th, September, same. Friday the 13th. Friday Even the 13th. better, right? Okay. So go get your Friday the 13th tattoo specials at all your shops. Go get your Lucky 13 tattoos. Listen to Little car- or, uh Same. Because it's going to be the new one, right? Little right Karma comes out Little August Karma 9th. Same. Yeah, after Little Karma on August 9th. Put that pre save for same coming out September 13th. Friday the 13th. Uh, anything else? Uh, like, follow, share. Uh, see you next time. Mahalo.